Today's version of the web is increasingly centralized, which means that just a few key players have a virtual monopoly on the flow of all human information and human communication. Obviously, this is bad from a censorship perspective, as governments and companies can shut down voices they don't want to hear, but it's also bad from a technical perspective as well as a data preservation perspective. So IPFS, which stands for Interplanetary File System, hopes to change all of that. And in this video, I'll show you how, and as a bonus, I'll show you how to get started with IPFS, giving you a real-world example of building and launching your first website without having to pay any hosting fees. Hey everyone and welcome, I'm the Part-Time Economist and in today's video we are taking a look at Interplanetary File System. So there's actually some very ambitious goals of this project as you can tell from the label Interplanetary. The end goal of this is to be a file system that enables sharing of files and basically building the internet so that we can access it as we travel across space, right? So that's pretty cool, that's the long-term goal, but in the short term they're solving a few more down-to-earth problems. So. Right now, the web is inefficient and inexpensive. With HTTP, we're downloading files from one centralized location, which means that we might have to wait. We have bandwidth issues. With this distributed file system, we can save up to 60% on bandwidth for video. So we can be faster, we can be more efficient, and we can be more decentralized. One thing that I thought was crazy is the average lifespan of a web page is 100 days before it's gone forever. So that's crazy. When you think about all the important things that have happened in human history and then the average web page is gone in 100 days. Even if we're saving things on dedicated servers and putting them there for long-term storage, what if one of those servers goes down, right? So with this, IPFS is distributing important copies of files on multiple different locations to enable it to basically be more secure, to be longer lasting. So those are some of the things that IPFS is, is doing. I don't want to go too much into it, but we do need to cover a little bit about how it works. So with the traditional internet, we use something known as location-based addressing. So if I want to find videos from the part-time economist, I can go to the parttimeeconomist.com forward slash Coinbase, right? And hopefully when I go there, I will see a video about Coinbase. However, I'm going to see whatever video is there. So I'm going to a location but I'm not getting specific content. With IPFS, we are actually pulling specific content. So when we upload content, it will create a hash. Now, that hash is known as a content ID. So when we're looking for a file on IPFS, we're not saying go to parttimeeconomist.com forward slash Coinbase. We're saying find me the hash of this specific file that I'm looking for, which makes it more efficient. It makes it more robust. It has a lot of other advantages, but basically, it's more secure, it's more decentralized, it preserves data better, there's just a lot of great advantages from it. So with that being said, I think it really helps when you're talking about new technology to actually put it in perspective and see what it can do for you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to create your very own web page using IPFS. Now this is something that I've struggled with a long time because I didn't want to pay hosting fees and at the same time I didn't want to use one of those cheap build a website that you can get for free and then you have to have ads and everything like that. So it's a real solution to a real problem and hopefully it'll get your feet wet with IPFS. So. The first thing that we're going to have to do is go to IPFS and click install and they're going to have a couple different downloads for desktop. You can get it for Windows, for Mac, and for Linux, whatever operating system that you are working on. Simply go ahead, download that, install it, get it set up, and launch it. Now, once we launch, what you're going to see is that we have a couple different tabs. Status, Files, Explore, Peers, and Setting. Again, this is not an IPFS class. Um, even explaining like one functionality of IPFS, there's videos on YouTube that are an hour long just explaining how the file system works. Another video that's an hour long explaining how different nodes in the network operate. So I'm showing you how to do it. If you want to learn more, plenty of great videos out there for you. So let's get started. Let's build our website. Now, what you'll see is I've opened a previous website. I've already uploaded this and this is the file that I uploaded. So it's talking, it's showing me a few things and I actually made a spelling mistake here and that where I put I fig figured I could use this as a landing page instead of I figured. So we want to change that but this brings up a great opportunity. When we go to these files, what you're going to see, this is the cryptographic hash of that function. So if I click copy CID, I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paste it here. This is that cryptographic ID 
of our file. And when I change just one character in IPFS, my entire cryptographic hash is going to change. And that's incredibly important because it shows modifications. So there's no, if, if a file has been tampered with, you're going to know because you're getting an entirely different cryptographic hash, even if one letter, one period has been changed. So there's our initial cryptographic hash. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go back and I've changed this from Fugard to Figured. And so you want to build your own website. And what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to link in the comments in the description to this template. Now, this is an incredibly simple template. You are not going to impress anyone with this template. It simply links to all of your existing social media. So the first thing that you want to do is up here, there's a brackets that says head. You're simply going to go to the part-time economist IPFS page and name that whatever you want. So this is the title of your website. That same title, you're going to want to copy it and paste it down here. Now this page is actually going to be the title that's displayed on your website. The first one was the title of the website. This is what's actually getting displayed. So you're going to need them both. They don't have to be the same, but I would recommend it. So that's going to be your title centered in the middle of your page. And then underneath that, we're going to have a short description of the website. So anything that you see that's in these little brackets, do not adjust that unless you know what you're doing. If you know HTML, you know what you're doing, by all means, go ahead and adjust it. If you don't, um, just stick with what I've got here for you and simply change this to be a description of whatever you want. After that, we've got the links to our social media profiles. So in quotations, that is going to be where you're wanting to send your viewer. So if I'm wanting to link to my read.cash page, I would just go to my read.cash, copy my profile, and make sure that I paste it in between here. So yours should look exactly like mine looks, but it would be your username. In here, this is going to be the text that you actually want displayed. So let's just for an example here, and I'm going to show you how easy this is. Control C, Control V. Now what I want to do is let's suppose that I want to add my LinkedIn profile. I'm going to go to my LinkedIn, simply copy and paste that, and then go right back here. And that's going to go, remember, exactly in the quotation marks, replace that. And then where it says Den Social, I'm going to change that to LinkedIn. L-I-N-K-E-D, L-I-N-K-E-D-I-N. And then I'm going to save this. And for our purposes, we're going to save this as Test Web 2. Now, keep in mind, even if we saved this as the same file name, IPFS would calculate a different hash because it has different content. But for our purposes, for the humans here in this video, um, that's why we're changing the title. So with that being said, that's Test Web 2. We actually want to save this as an HTML file. So let me get rid of that. So when we're saving this, I made the mistake. You can use just a simple text editor to use the template that I'm going to give you. And you can do it in Notepad. It's completely fine. The only difference you have to do is when you're saving this, go to File and Save As and make sure that you put dot HTML at the end of that and what that's going to do is that's going to make sure that when you upload it to IPFS it knows that it is indeed a web page and not just a text document. So now once we have that HTML file we're simply going to drag and drop it into IPFS and there you see it's sitting there test web to HTML. So what you'll see is that we have a completely new cryptographic hash even though we've only changed a few things. So here's all the changes that we've made we can see that we've added that LinkedIn profile. Now, let's suppose we actually want to view this website. You don't believe me, you think, hey, it's just locally on my computer. No, this IPFS file, and that's what I love so much about this. You can share files with anyone anywhere in the world as long as they have your cryptographic hash. You do not need to pay for GoDaddy. You do not need to pay for any of those stuff. You can upload it. You can basically do all of this yourself, which is groundbreaking to me. So. What we want to do, we want to go back to files and in order to share this, what we're going to do is we're going to click share link. We're going to copy this and we're going to paste it into the web browser of our choice. Now, the first time that we're doing this, I do have to be honest with you, it can take five to 10 minutes for this basically to get processed to be available. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste this into a different web browser. So I'm going to use edge, which is something that I hardly ever use. 
and we're going to control V and what you're going to see is it is going to take quite a long time to load. So I'm going to pause. I'm going to put the timer on my watch. I'll speed through this portion of the video. Then we'll come back and see how long it actually takes for this. So I know it's taken just a little bit. Overall, it was about 10 minutes and 30 seconds. My camera actually cut out. So I had to stop the video, start a new video, but it's been about 10 minutes, 30 seconds for everything to finish uploading and our file our web page is live and I mean you can see it works I can go to publish OX it's gonna take me directly to that web page it's going to take me to uh, my account on Hive wherever I want to go everything like that works and one thing I do just want to show you really quick is I am gonna show you um, because I don't want people to get the impression that this is just a local file that's just on your machine and you're really accessing an HTML doc that's actually on your machine. So I emailed the link to myself here on the part-time economist account. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to open that up and what you're going to see is that it's going to open on my phone just as well. So obviously pretty cool this is something that i've always wanted to do for a long time and it's just really cool to be able to actually host that website yourself put it on ipfs not have to go through a provider anything like that so overall ipfs there is so much more involved with ipfs than what i could even go over in a three to five hour video so the main takeaway for you as an end user as someone that's getting interested in this technology is that a couple things number one it's decentralized, right? That in and of itself is a huge benefit of the current over the current web. Not only is it decentralized, it also used that content based addressing. So, you know, if you're getting to a certain place, that's the exact content you're looking for. Any changes to content are going to be reflected by a different cryptographic hash. So let's suppose I'm looking at the Declaration of Independence, for example, right? as originally written and then I think hey someone has changed a couple words here or anything like that right or computer code right I know there's a code that works really well and I'm wondering hey someone might have had to maybe go through here and they changed a couple things to add some malicious code with this content based ID I know without having to check through a thousand lines of code or read the entire document I know that it's the exact same as long as that cryptographic hash is the same so it's a lot more secure it's decentralized we've got files stored all over the place instead of one centralized location and on top of that it's better for data preservation censorship resistance a whole lot of cool things and it gives that power to you as a user so in closing I'd like to say thanks for watching the video I appreciate you watching and I hope this has given you not just an understanding of IPFS but if if you've never created a website at four, hopefully you'll be able to go through kind of just do those little tweaks I showed you and launch your own website on IPFS. If you do launch your website on IPFS, leave a link down in the comments below because I would love to go and check it out and see what you all have been able to do with this. So as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.